Hello, uh, my name is Peter Pulaski, and welcome to the second of our SQLMR tutorials. Uh, in session one, we talked about SQLMR in general, and today we'll be talking about NPath. So what is NPath? NPath is a SQL MapReduce function which is included with NCluster, and it enables the analysis of ordered data. Examples of ordered data include clickstream data, financial transaction data, user interaction data, or anything else of a time series nature. And NPath leverages the power of the SQL MapReduce framework to transcend some of SQL's limitations with respect to ordered data and allows you to get insight from your time series data more effectively. So let's talk about an example. In this case, analyzing a click stream. So the business question is, given a series of clicks in the database, tell me how many distinct users follow a particular path. In this case, we have a path motivated by an auction site. So let's say, how many distinct users start at the home page, click on an auction, view the seller's profile, and then finally bid on an item. And the available data is a database table called clicks, let's say, that's populated with just web log data that has three columns, uh, user ID, timestamp, and page type. So it's the simplest possible click stream. So here's the NPath query that would issue to answer that business question. And let's step through this query one by one uh, to talk about how NPath works. So step one, is to partition the data into groups. So in this case, we'll be partitioning by user ID. Because we'll only be considering clicks for a particular user, we want to define these partitions. Within each partition, we're going to sort the clicks by a different column, in this case, by timestamp. So we formed individual groups for every user, and each of those groups will now be sorted by timestamp. So for each user, we'll have a, an ordered sequence of clicks and we'll be doing pattern matching over this ordered sequence of clicks. So now what we need to do is, once we have this, this ordered sequence, is to define the pattern in which we're interested. And this has two steps. The first step is defining the set of symbols. So we're going to look at each individual click and label it with zero or more symbols. In this case, because these, these symbols are disjoint, uh, they'll be at most one. So We'll say if the page type is home, we'll label that as H. If the page type is auction, as A. If the page type is profile, as P. And if the page type is bid, as B. So the system will go through, and every click will get labeled with either H, H, A, P, B, or nothing. So now that we've labeled all the clicks, we're going to be doing pattern matching over these labels. And so in this case, we're, we want to find um, all, all sequences that follow the pattern home, followed by auction, followed by profile, followed by bid. And the way we'll do that is we'll string together the symbols we defined before using a regular expression. So in this case, the regex is h.a.p.b. Now, every time we match uh, something of this pattern, we're going to compute some set of aggregates over, over this, this, this subsequence that we matched. So in this case, all we want to do is we want to find the user ID. So every time we find a, a path of HAPB, we'll look at that, that path we matched, and we'll find out what user followed that path to the site. So if you noticed, NPath here acts like a table. So what NPath will do is it will do the pattern matching across all the clicks in the system, and it'll output a single row for every time it matches this particular path. And that row will contain a single column, which is user ID. And so NPath acts like a table, and so we can then arbitrarily dissect or change that table with SQL. So in this case, we're interested in the count of distinct users that follow this particular path. So NPath is going to be a table with one row for each time the path happens. We'll do a count distinct over all these user IDs, and we'll get the total number of distinct users who follow the path, this path, through the site. So NPath can also answer more complicated questions. So consider this, for example. 
to find a sort of an arbitrary business problem. So find all the users with click paths that started at page 50 and then passed exclusively through either page 80 or pages in the ca in category 9 or category 10. And for every time such a user is found, find the page ID of the last page in the path and count the number of times that page 80 was visited. And for each of these, report the maximum count for each last page and sort the output by the latter. So find the most frequent, uh, most frequent last page. And we want to restrict this end path query to paths containing at least five pages. And we want to ignore pages in sequences with um, category ID less than zero. So again, here is the end path query that answers this question. And this query shows some of the more advanced functionality in terms of how NPath can integrate with SQL. So you'll notice the on clause, uh, which defines what table or subquery uh, the SQL MAR function should act on, is not just a table as it was before, it's now actually a subquery. So we filter out all, cat all clicks that are in category less than 10 uh, with this subquery. We partition and order data the same way as we did in the previous query, but now we have a more complicated pattern. So you'll notice that whereas before we were matching a very particular path, one that had four steps and exactly four steps, here we have a wild card. So here we're saying that we want to find all paths that start at page A, which is a page with ID 50, and then go through one, either B or C, zero or more times. So B is something with page ID 80, whereas C is a page in category 9 or 10. So possible matches would be just A, or A followed by B, or A followed by C, or A followed by B and B and B, or A followed by B and C and B and C. Anything like that would, would match in this particular case. So every time we match something of this, of this pattern, which you know, we define based on our, on our business question in the previous slide, we're going to compute some set of aggregates about that sequence we matched. And in this case, there'll be three. So the three we'll compute is the first one, the count, the total length of, of this path. So how many times any of A, B, or C appeared in the path that we matched. Whereas in the previous example, the path would always be of length four. Here, the path can be basically of any length. So it can be length one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So the first thing we want to know is how many how many elements were in this path that we matched. The second aggregate is the page ID of the last page in the path. So we use a an aggregate that's custom for NPath called last, which gives um, which matches the last row of any A, B, or C. So look at the entire path, find the last element in that path, and pull out the page ID. And finally, we also want to compute the count over just um, just B, just Bs. So again, this this maps back to our business question of for any particular path, tell me how many user how many times the user went to to page ID 80. So now you'll notice that that end path um, outputs three columns: count, last page, and B count. So it acts as a table that looks over all your clicks. In this case, all the clicks of, of category greater than or equal to zero. And it'll compute a single row each time it matches a path. And the single row will contain three columns, count, last page, and B count. And so now we can layer on SQL to further slice and dice this table. So here we want to filter out uh, all paths that are shorter than five. And this happens with the where count is greater or equal to five clause. We also want to group by the last page and find the maximum B count. Um, so again, this is motivated by the business problem on the previous question. We're going to have for every last page, we're going to find out what the maximum B count for that last page was. And then we're going to sort this, this whole output set, this whole result set um, by a max count to get our answer.